Welcome back to the basics, boys. Today, we're explaining the most simple thing in existence, the Blender viewport. Uh, I mean, look at how simple it looks. <laughs> uh, not really. I'm going to try to do this pretty fast as well. I mean, come on, CG cookie. Eight minutes? Oh, we're doing it in five, baby. So here's my plan for the viewport. We're going to start down here, come across like this, come all the way up, across again, juke out that top menu, come down, back up, across, and finish straight down to the top menu. Let's go. All right, let's start with the animation timeline. Basically, this is where animation playback happens. It works something like this, with the keyframes moving with the timeline. Of course, you also have your playback buttons, your frame count, and a few other useful tools down here. Now the intimidating menu on the right. Let's start at the top, shall we? This box at the top, yeah, I've got no freaking clue, man. I mean, in three years of modeling, I've never used it once, and I've never seen anyone else use it. Period. End of story. The next one is all your render settings, like which render engine you're using, which parts of the viewport are being rendered, lighting, etc. Next up you have output properties, which is where you choose what happens to your renders after you render them. Next you've got viewing layers. You won't need this much, as it's mostly for rendering. It's basically just messing with which layers of your scene render at once. Then scene properties. Here you can change the metric units and basically deal with any numeric properties of the viewport. Now world settings. This lets you change up a ton of things about the environment of your viewport, like its color and brightness. You'll have to switch to render view to see any of the changes though, but imagine that. You control light now. You control the daylight cycle. You're a nuclear power plant for your viewport. Of course, the next box here is mostly basic functions, like the transformations of your mesh and viewport visibility settings. Next we have modifiers, which are automatic operations that affect the geometry of your mesh. You may have heard of a couple of them before, like the mirror modifier, subsurf modifier, and decimate modifier. Next up we have particle systems. Particle systems let you quickly distribute hundreds of meshes over a surface. It's useful for creating things like grass or sprinkles on a donut. After that, we have physics. Essentially, it's a ton of different ways for Blender to automatically simulate physics for animations. Most of them are a bit complicated to set up, so I'll just show you this cloth one I made. Not bad at all. Up next, we have object constraints. I wish I could phrase this better, but it's really in the name. Object constraints are just different ways of constraining the transformations of an object. You can limit their rotation in one direction, have them copy another object's movement, etc. You won't need to use them that much, but it's pretty cool that they exist. I'm running out of sequential transition words, but up next we have the object data properties menu. Here you can control things like vertex groups, auto smoothing, and shape keys. I don't want to get into all those right now, but they're all just pretty cool little features that you might use every now and then. Next is the material tab. It's speaks for itself. You can control an object's materials from here. Just be sure to go into material preview mode at the top right so that you can see what you're doing. Finally, we have the textures tab. When paired with certain modifiers, you can create some wacky textures and surfaces for your meshes. It's pretty useful. In the top right is the scene collection, which shows absolutely everything that you have in your 3D viewport. When you add more meshes to your scene, they'll appear up there. You can also hide them by pressing the I button and unhide them by pressing the curve icon. Now we got the global axis, which, like mainstream media, can control your view of the world. <laughs> oh, see what I did there? By clicking and dragging or clicking on a side, you can change the orientation of your view. To the left of that is all your viewport display settings, like how you view your meshes, which lines are visible, all that jazz. In this center tab, we have the snapping tool and proportional editing. The snapping tool is super useful for merging vertices together, but that's really all you'll ever use it for. There's one other transformation tab up here, but I doubt you'll ever use it. Next in edit mode, we have a lot more tools up here. UVs, vertice transformations, mesh transformations, and a menu to add more meshes to your scene. On this sidebar to the left is all the modeling tools, and above that you can choose between vertice, edge, and face select. In object mode, all the tools are the same, just a little more simplified. And of course, file to manage importing and exporting, edit to change operations and preferences, render to render your scene or object, window to change your windows around, and help if you're just... If, if you just, you can't do this anymore. Now for this thick list of tabs up top. Layout is of course the base menu. Modeling takes you straight into edit mode. Sculpting takes you into the sculpt menu where you can manually sculpt your mesh. UV editing allows you to UV unwrap your mesh so that you can put some proper textures on it. Very nice. Texture painting is another way of coloring that I just don't want to get into right now. Shading is like the material editor from before, but a hundred times more complicated since it's node based and has like 300 more functions. Animation is 
for animating, rendering is for rendering, simple as that. Compositing is sort of like adding Photoshop elements to a final render. Basically, it's just fixing any small mistakes you made after you've already done the render. I cannot physically articulate how little you will ever use scripting. Blender Guru, the legendary donut man himself, has even admitted to never using it, and he's been using Blender for like 10 years. Scripting is made for you to create your own tools inside of Blender if you want to, but since Blender has basically every tool you'll ever need, you can see pretty clearly why no one ever uses it. Oh, alright, I think that was the whole viewport. I uh, hope you all have a great day, maybe you learned something, and stay tuned for the next episode of the Basics series. I'll see y'all later.